Welcome back, we're the Bourbon Junkies. He's Dan, I'm Sean, and tonight we're gonna talk about some of the learnings that we've had through the years on YouTube. And you guys can see Cookie. Look at him. He just doesn't care. He's so happy. He just wants attention. Just being Pat, he loves it. Yeah. Not one care in the world. All right, All before right. we move on, today's at oh, there's so much. Oh, there's a little snow on Fake there. snow on Tommy still. We got Tommy, mother F and D. Thank you for supporting the channel, buddy. This is on his channel. This Thomas. is our Griffless. Glenn. It's the Tomas. This is the fired. It's this the Santa. Bourbon. Tommy Driftless Glenn. is an owl if on this sticker. It's one of the better stickers that includes Tommy, the only uh -huh. one. But I was like, mm. Dan is just checking audio. Don't worry about that. But uh, that's our Driftless Glenn pick. Tommy came with us. It was a blast. Tommy, thank you for supporting the channel, buddy. I don't remember this being 124 proof. That's really good. Whoa. I don't remember it being that good, if I'm being completely honest. That's fantastic. Tastes like cinnamon red apple. That's really good. Mm, was that the 53 gallon barrel? I don't know. I like that a lot, though. That's really good. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't remember loving that like that. And I loved that. That's spicy. That's a good drink. I enjoy that. All right. So today we're going to talk to you about the things that we've learned on this journey. It's been like four or five years-ish, give five. or take. And listen, when you start a YouTube channel and you get into anything, the ours just happens to be whiskey, but when you get into stuff, you just learn a bunch of stuff if you try hard enough. It's literally my motto, dude. You just get better every day. You just learn. Being smarter. Oh, you, okay. Yeah. yeah that's fair. Yeah, 100%. All right. I'm not even going to argue that one. That, that's such a good way to look at it. It's just factual. Yeah. It's just scientific. <clears throat> <laughs> Someone say, all right, <coughs> listen, we've done things where we like talked about what we've learned about in bourbon since we've been in it. Yeah. Not I don't know chasing if, the hype and yeah. you know, I don't know if we've talked about the YouTube side so much. We haven't. Um, and like Dan said, we've been doing it for five years now and I was just looking back at some of our old videos, a little rough. Um, they're really bad. They they're were really so bad. Rough. We were not good at color correcting and we did not have great equipment. Well, we didn't even have a microphone when we started. No. We had a Nikon 3100 DSLR. Yeah. They're not made for video. They overheat a lot. Yeah. Corrupted a lot of video. So uh, tip number one that we really learned was reinvest yeah. or just invest. Um, because oh. at that point in time, channel was not making any money. It was what it we just, like to call losing. It was whatever we would put into it. And, Hemorrhaging. Um, I remember one night, I know we've told the story a couple times, but we were sitting around batching some content out. We were like, we just got to get some videos done so like we, we can get ahead. We shot like four or five videos. Dan went around, looked at the camera and said, mother ex expletive. Sure. Um, the camera had overheated and corrupted the SD card. So everything that we had shot that night was then gone. Gone forever. Dan that night got on, like as I was standing there, goes, don't worry, got a new camera coming. Just bought one off Amazon. Just bought a, a Panasonic G5 or something off Amazon. Yeah, it was G something. It was fine. Listen, it, you gotta, it got us there. Here's a huge recommendation. When you get into something, if you wanna do this, you just make sure you do a little research and buy the things that you can afford to buy at the time that are upgrades. By upgrading little parts and pieces over time creates a humongous change at, mm -hmm. at a point in time. So like with, when we look back on our first videos, I think there were literally like six different sets or arrangements in this same building. Yes, we kept and moving. They lot. were all dog shit, but we were just <laughs> trying to improve little by little. <clears throat> at one point I bought shower curtains and Sean and I hung them from like a rafter beam, like an eye beam yes. to soften the light because we were learning about softening light and things like that. We literally had spotlights for lighting. Yeah. And um, like as I would dance in and out of them, yeah. I just looked more and more white. So it just wasn't great. Sean was upset about the white back wall. We also had a year. white block wall. Yeah. Not great. Sean hated that. Terrible contrast. No contrast, I would say. Yeah. The lack thereof. <laughs> but no, reinvesting and understanding. A lot of people get this, but reinvesting into what you're doing is 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 the best thing you could possibly do. Mm -hmm. Sean and I, I mind you, the channel made like negative I don't know, fifteen thousand dollars a year one, and then it uh, made the, maybe carried itself and made some money in year two. I think year two it carried itself. And then, um, but as it started to carry, it was carrying itself and it was making money. We were spending the money on the channel, yeah. So it was paying for itself in the upgrades. 
And then uh, Sean and I didn't take any money, period, out of the channel, like not a penny for ourselves until the third year. Three years. And all of that money was like just going back and we bought more cameras and better lights and well, an actual guys, microphone. And yeah, I was gonna say, as you guys see, you know, we went from the different sets, we got new cameras, it allowed us to like way more capability. Um, like we started doing B-roll and stuff like that. And then we had a new set and like, all that stuff cost money. Yes. So like it was just and it's worth it constant though. reinvestment because the the quality of video that we were allowed to do was so much greater. Yeah. You gotta you have to realize that like it sucks, but it's worth it. Yeah. it. It is worth it. What you you're gonna get eventually you're gonna get what you pay for. Yeah. Now we have three cameras right here. We probably have five or six total cameras at this point. I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, they all have different uses. They're all some of the lenses are better for certain things. Some of the little cameras are better for walking around. You know, it's just. What you find is you like get these little things that you might not use very often, but when you need them, they're so great to have. So Invaluable. if you can afford that stuff, it's great. And then number two, I would just say um, for us, it was a big, big learning curve of making content our own. Um, there yeah, was you gotta do you. There was a, a couple channels when we first started, and it was like, you, you know, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And it was like, well, we didn't know what we were doing. What they were doing, we thought were cool. Yeah. So we like kind of imitated what they're doing, but put our own spin on it. We were yeah. us doing similar things and then just kind of got into a groove. It was like, all right, well now we know what we're doing. Let's just do it our way. Mm -hmm. And that goes really far. Cause like when it boils down to just being genuine, yes. like that's the being thing you. that people want to see is they don't want to see a character. They want to see someone that they can relate to. Listen, and it makes it so much easier. If you're gonna do a character, you better be number one, incredibly good at it, and number two, really sold on being that person all the time mm -hmm. when you're out and about. Because yeah. to give credit where credit's due, Sean was referencing Chad and Sarah from It's Bourbon Night. Yeah. They were watching them, their blinds were really fun to watch. And so that when Sean and I started doing reviews and whiskey thing, it was like, let's do blinds. Well, then Sean and I have known each other for an attorney, so it was like, let's make it competitive turn it into a competition because that's just kind of how things end up working anyways. And that's what put like our spin was like, let's like we came up with a point system or we came up with who's better at this or that type yeah. of stuff, right? But doing you and making sure you is who you're like, well, we've been told several <laughs> times, I can't believe that you're the same person who you are on video. Yeah. And it's like, I don't have the energy to be somebody else there and then here, and then go home and not be that person either. Yeah, it like, feels very exhausting to put oh. on a front for how many videos that we've done now. If you're gonna um, do it, be like Dr. Disrespect. They're like, yeah. I don't know how many people on YouTube have pulled it off, but there aren't a ton, right? No. And, and the people who are doing it, that is an actual job. Like yes. they just for real. Because as soon as you step it's out or in front of a camera, you have to turn that switch on Every and time. be that person. The whole time. And that feels exhausting yes. to me. So you gotta I be yourself and you gotta be genuine. And the reason that the truly the reason that we have the community that we have is because it it needs to be genuine and we have we try really hard to be really transparent mm -hmm. and be honest with you guys um and all of those things and that's i just feel like that's so important when i watch somebody and i feel like it's fake i'm out i'm good yeah. I, and i don't care to hang out with you either probably um it just i don't know from a consumer perspective you know um, third key for us was consistency um, we're five years deep, like do we it, said. Do it long and hard. We have never missed an upload never on a missed. scheduled upload date. So like live streams, a little bit different. Sure. We've missed here and there. You never missed a Monday, Thursday. But yes, never. our um, scheduled content. So um, like the Mondays and Thursdays when we did poor guesses on Fridays, it was always there. People yep. knew those days, those times, expect a video from us. Yeah. And I think that goes a long way. It's gonna be way. harder shit, let me tell you. Yes, that one's gonna be really rough. I um, had a baby. I was in like <laughs> in and out of ICUs for a whole year, yep. in and out of surgeries with a newborn. The most stressful time of my whole life. And it, through COVID, mm -hmm. did all of that and we never miss an up. Uh, I, you can do it. I, you can fucking do it because I did it. I, we were, really we were close. working day <laughs> jobs. Like, I, yeah. like this is, people sleep on this part of it, but we're working full time jobs and I had a baby and then Luna needed surgery and she needed to, we were, like I said, we were in and out of ICUs for week, two weeks at a time sometime. Yeah. We go down to U of M for literally two weeks and be in a room and we still never miss an upload, which means, I'm not saying it's easy. What I'm saying is you can fucking do it if you try hard enough, but you got to try hard enough. Yeah. I didn't miss ICU appointments. I was always with them, but you, we planned ahead and not, you know, if we knew something was coming up, we'd have something scheduled. Batching content to a certain extent will like save you 
in the consistency format. Yes. Um, and but, now like consistency boils down to us is like our setup, basically. Yeah. Um, we're make at a point now yourself. where things just kind of set up and move. Yeah. Um, you gotta and, make it easy on yourself. Yeah. We schedule much better now. Yeah. Um, it's and, hell, but you can do it. Then I would say, um, if someone's getting into this, just do what you enjoy. Uh, it's going to be really hard to do something that you don't enjoy. Yeah. And don't, Dan had brought this up, said don't make it a job day one. Like you have to enjoy doing it, yeah. whereas like fun, um, and then like maybe somewhere down the road, you're like, you know, I'm not having fun with it. And then you just don't do it. Yeah. Um, that was our plan. Yeah. When it wasn't fun, if, if it wasn't it. working and it wasn't fun. We'd stop doing it. If it was fun, we'd just do it because it was fun. Yeah. And that, that's how all everything, the whole thing started because, listen, like, like literally my pitch to Sean when we started this was, Dumbest if we, pitch ever if too, we don't way. like it, we just won't do it. Like who gives a shit, right? Yeah. Put it up, it was fun or it wasn't. It was fun, let's do another one. It was fun, let's do another yeah. one. You know, let's expand or whatever. It may turn into a job. And like right now, this is a job. You can still have fun doing your job mm -hmm. and like, have Sean and I shot videos we didn't want to shoot? It, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, you, you, you can't even be ready. A lot of them. You can't even be ready to know what it feels like to batch content, lose all said batch content, and have to reshoot videos when we don't script shit. Yeah. Because it feels scripted the second time we did it, because yeah. we've already done it. Coming back to it, it was that like... Sucks. You're trying to recapture the magic that the happens first time. The, like maybe one of us will rip a joke or something, or a, a really a good story. quip of something. Yeah. And it was like... Well, the mics weren't working, so we got to reshoot that. And it was like, all right, we cancel it. Now, thankfully, we're in a place that like we can cancel ideas and then come back to them later. We have one yeah. that we're going to reshoot because it went so well the first time and that exact thing happened. The mics weren't working. So it was like... This was like two weeks ago. Yeah. It was like, I we're don't... five years in. I don't enjoy... <laughs> we suck. Reshooting content. So we don't. We'll, we'll just come back to it at a later date where we'll forget what happened and we'll move on with that. Yeah. And... To add to it, like shit just happens sometimes. We've had, um, I had a NAS like with eight, I, I'll never forget, we had 18 episodes batched that were reviews. Oh yeah. I had a NAS, I was editing one night and the NAS took a shit, all 18 videos were gone. Like Sean mentioned, like we fried SD cards that had you know a handful of videos on them. That stuff just happens and yeah. it does either That's backing nice. your stuff up or whatever. But when you batch, just keep your stuff relatively safe. Keep it in two places is a better idea than keeping it in one. Um, I, there's just a lot to think about. And if you just take it one step at a time, you figure it all out or ask other people yeah. for help and have a mentor. Or, that one's a big one. You know, a lot of people have reached out and asked questions and asked how we do certain things or why, or I know like for a fact that have helped certain channels set up like doing picks for themselves and, I, and stuff like in that. In no way, shape or form do I think that we do it the best or the most efficient or anything like that, but what I we disagree. do works, so. <laughs> I know what we do works. How about that? I can only attest to what we've done and sure. what I know does and doesn't work we for do us. We do some things and, really well. Yeah. We do other things pretty poorly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then lastly, I'd say if you want to do it, you just got to start. And if you don't start, you're a bitch. You can't be hypercritical, step one. Be critical. Go back and look at our old videos. Yeah. I would look at those and go, I would never watch those guys. Yeah. It was, it was very, very bad. Yeah, but that's um, why you should be critical. We were not fix comfortable it. in front of the camera. Fix it. <laughs> Fucking we fix had it. terrible video, terrible audio, but we genuinely did have fun but in front of the camera. That, that's, that shown through on all the videos. We definitely were having fun. Um, but you just, like anything in life, we talked about it very recently, the podcast that's about to come out. If you're gonna start something, you're gonna suck at it. No yeah, matter gotta. what, there's a period of suck. Yeah. And you got to get through that, and then you're like, all right, cool. And then you start working on your skills. Um, it's Make just... like 50 videos before you even worry about how bad you are. Yeah. Because on that 50th one, you're gonna be like, this is really talking to that camera becomes hyper normalized. Mm -hmm. That's what a lot of people get scared of and, and have a hard time with. And what you realize is, if you don't have somebody else, it's more lonely. But you become comfortable. Like when you were gone, I think I live stream. I live streamed alone yeah. for two hours. Yep. And it's just like, listen, I'm also just hanging out with chat. Like these things pe can become very normal, whether they should or not. I have no idea, so but they can be. How much did you hate the sound of your voice when we started editing videos? Yeah, I for <clears> sure <throat> didn't like it. Yeah. Yep. I know what I sound like very well because I've heard it for I don't know how many hours now. Yeah. It's a very strange feeling. When it takes you like hear, two hear months to get over it. You're just like, that's not what I sound like. Yeah. Some people still just, I think, always. I think that's like, I don't even know if that's an acclimation. I yeah. think it's just a person by person basis. That's fair. Because like, I think I know some people still, like professional people, yeah. like comedians, yeah. who still hate the sound of their own voice mm -hmm. and won't edit their own shit. 
even though like they would generally have input. And then you have people like Burt Kreischer, who's like, I laugh at all my own shit when I rewatch it. I laugh. I'm, I'm at the stage now where I really l genuinely laugh on some stuff, and sure. I'll, I'll tell you about yeah. it or I'll send it or whatever. And it's like, yeah, I'm just I'm comfortable with it now. It just it's it's a time thing. Yeah, but you do. You got to keep it fun. Listen, if you get tired of doing something, you just figure out a way to switch it up. And this isn't just like whiskey too. No, it's in general. This is just like all of YouTube. Hobbies. Like I've seen. If, if someone wanted to start like. At one point in time, we talked about doing biking, mountain biking stuff. Yeah. Thank God we didn't. Oh, we'd be dead by now. I'd be so skinny. Oh, I think we would have fallen no, apart. No, we would be way healthier. I think we would have fallen apart <laughs> by now. We'd be so much healthier, but, dude. I mean, like, we we really could have carried over a lot of the stuff that we learned yeah. from this channel into the next one. Yeah. And I hope if anyone is looking at doing anything on YouTube that this type of stuff helps you. Yeah. Listen, it's like a journey, but yeah. you need to treat it that way too. 100%. If you don't treat it that way, if you don't look for improvement, you gotta be reflective and you gotta be introspective. You should be able to watch your own videos and be like, what the things I can improve on. Mm -hmm. We've spent a lot of money over five years, like hundreds of thousands of dollars now, literally over five years on up improving and upgrading and Sad. doing better in whiskey. And cause here, the nice part about whiskey specifically, our overhead on just reviews and normal content is relatively low. Because it can be. we needed one bottle, we need four bottles a month. If we do four reviews a month, mm -hmm. we control what those bottles are. We get to tailor our overhead to our budget, right? Yes. Now, do we want the, the something we did early on that we don't do as much now, but specifically would try to be the first review out on X bottle that yeah. was, we knew would do better than other bottles? Yep. Um, we don't, it, that's, that's, that in itself is a job. Like I, I literally remember, and we live we in a the smaller town. I was gonna of... say, I remember going to the stores every Tuesday, every mm -hmm. Thursday, at like noon, you knew when the drops were at the store. Yep. Now nobody gets anything and everybody keeps it behind counters. Yeah. Back then you used to get it on a shelf and it might pay like $20 more. It was a lot more. more fun then. It was more fun. But like, you just gotta like look at other channels and see what they're doing and pull those out and look outside of Whiskey Tube if you're in Whiskey Tube for fucking trending stuff. That's where we the tier list ideas honestly. came from for this channel. Yeah. Was in gaming, tier lists were huge. And some of our early tier list videos were doing really well. So, not just that, like camera stuff. Um, oh, that like, stuff for sure. Like, um, tech stuff, yeah. Yeah, like tech or set design or like flow. Yeah. We'll look at a lot of other channels and how they do it. Yeah. And it was like, we can incorporate that stuff. That's very easy. Um, yeah, just pirate everything. I mean, but make it your own. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, listen, I mean, there aren't a ton of original ideas, but you mm. can be original in your space. 100%. You 100% can. And you, like Sean said, you can make it your thing in that space. So, I don't know, have fun with it, enjoy it, oh, enjoy yeah. that journey. And when you stop having fun, figure out a way to have fun again. Cheers, you cheers know? you guys, like, comment, subscribe. Open a distillery or something, I don't know. No, God, don't do that. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't do that. <laughs>